that Illinois players, the two Illinois players have gone together in the first round since 1965. One was a defensive back named George Donnelly. He went to San Francisco. The other was a linebacker named Dick Butkus. He went to Chicago. Which one of Rice or Hardy will be Donnelly? Which one will be Butkus? Both Jacksonville and Arizona are hoping that both Hardy and Rice are Dick Butkus. Lawrence Phillips. Is this Baltimore's pick with six minutes to go? Has to be. Uh, I think they're trying to make a deal here. There's no question, because I think they can go down a little bit, Chris, but there's absolutely no question in my mind that they have to take Lawrence Phillips based on the rushing attack of the Baltimore Ravens last year. Leroy Horde, 547 yards. Biner, 432. White, Hunter. But look at the production as far as touchdowns go. Just three all of last year. I don't think there's any question that Lawrence Phillips can fill their need. I personally don't necessarily agree with all the criticism that Phillips has been getting regarding his character and the issues that have happened off the field. Yes, he has done some things that he's not, I'm sure, proud of and not happy with, and the results have turned out that way. But the thing is, is this is a young man who is going to be a, a good football player. I believe he'll be an asset to a community if he's taken and chosen there. I would take Phillips in this spot because, first of all, they need him. Secondly, Ted Marchabroda, remember the Baltimore, or excuse me, the Buffalo Bills, their style of offense. That's what Ted's going to do in Baltimore. He needs a running back, no question. Well, there are five minutes left on the clock for the Ravens. Let's go down to Baltimore and Sal Palantonio and see if he's got his ear pressed up against the door. Sal? Thanks, Chris. Uh, last Wednesday, Art Modell, the Ravens owner, and that does sound weird to say, Ravens owner Art Modell, had dinner with Lawrence Phillips here in Baltimore for three hours. The next day, he had a press briefing, and he announced to the world that they really liked Lawrence Phillips, liked he was an impressive young man, I think the quote was, and that they were considering taking him. That was a trial balloon that they were th floating up there, and nobody took a shot at it. Surprisingly, for a week, no women's groups protested. There was no outcry, no letters to the editor. As a matter of fact, yesterday at the University of Baltimore, there was a symposium on sexual assault on campus, and Lawrence Phillips's name never came up. But just remember one thing. This is a town that's not used to having scandals associated with its pro athletes. Cal Ripken comes to mind. So don't be surprised if Jonathan Ogden is an alternative for this football team. Now let's go to Chris Mortensen in Miami. Well, Lawrence Phillips was one of two running backs that Jimmy Johnson considered trading up for, one being Phillips, one being Tim Bianca Batuka. Here's how Johnson investigated Phillips. He hired three psychologists to interview Phillips, and he videotaped every one of those sessions. And in the end, he felt that Phillips would be a worthy pick. He just doesn't have the ammunition to move up at this point. Let's go back to New York with Chris Berman. All right, Mort and, and Jimmy, we, you can wave at us. It's okay. We're back here in New York where it's about three and a half minutes left on Baltimore's pick. Let's go down to Craig James, who uh, certainly had plenty of success before he's been with us as a running back of the National Football League, played on a team that got to the Super Bowl, the New England Patriots. What are your, uh, your views of Lawrence Phillips, and should Baltimore go right here, Craig? Well, Chris, I've had a chance to watch him from the sidelines a number of times over the last two seasons. Initially, I really didn't have a lot of praise for him. He was a good running back, but he wasn't an excellent running back. It's taken him a little while to get used to getting into the secondary and allowing his legs to avoid tacklers in the secondary. It was like after he came back from the suspension that he was a new guy. He then became a first-round draft choice. His numbers improved, but you got to remember that he did handle himself extremely well following the suspension. He came back amongst a lot of criticism and power coming from the media. He handled it well. He came back, and he was a better player. I think I think this is an area where he should be taken somewhere in the middle of the first round but not the first or second round pick of the nfl draft chris i will see what the uh, the ravens feel the pick is in and let's go up to the podium and see if this is where lawrence phillips will play in the nfl with the uh Fourth choice in the first round, the Baltimore Ravens select John Ogden, tackle, UCLA. The New York Giants are now on the clock. Jonathan Ogden, six foot eight, 318, is the Baltimore pick. You're not Lawrence Phillips. And as somebody once said, the plot thickens. The plot is now thickened, although certainly when you're looking at Ogden, even though this is a team uh, with, with some very good tackles, Ogden projects 
As a, how can you tell you that a man who is 318 pounds looks skinny? You just saw Jonathan Ogden. He can move. He's got athletic ability that you would never believe, Mel, for a player who weighs 318, 320. I'll tell you, I think Art Modell hit the jackpot with his first pick in Baltimore. I couldn't agree with it any more than, than, uh, than they obviously came to the conclusion that they had a pass on Phillips. But Ogden is a superior athlete. You see the ability to get down the field and make a block. To view defenders, great vision on the move. You can see him the, just the way he can pull out, which gives you an idea that maybe he could move into a guard spot. Of course, the uh, Ravens are loaded at the tackle spot with Tony Jones or Orlando Brown. Now they have some flexibility. Watch him the way he keeps his massive frame between the defensive end and the quarterback back in pass protection. You look at the cornerstone of any great team in the NFL, look at the Dallas Cowboys with Eric Williams, the kind of difference he's made. Richmond Webb in Miami, we can go on and on. You need a great offensive tackle, a great bookend to make everything easier for your quarterback and your running game. And I think Jonathan Ogden will do exactly that in Baltimore. He has athletic ability at that position that you rarely see. A Richmond Webb might come to mind, maybe a William, William Rolfe down in New Orleans. Uh, Ogden, local, right? Going pretty much back home. Right, Washington uh, area, yep. young man. Now he plays about an hour from home in Baltimore. And it's only the second time that the Browns slash Ravens have taken an offensive lineman in the first round of 23 years. Steve Everett, 1993. Safe to say that Everett's hair is longer than Jonathan Ogden's. Let's go down and get the latest from Chris Mortensen in Miami. Mort? Well, the New York Giants, this is probably their worst nightmare. They were hoping to get one of the four players that have already been taken. You know, they expected maybe Simeon Rice would be there. They would have taken Ogden. Lawrence Phillips just isn't a need pick. They took Tyrone Wheatley last year. They've got Rodney Hampton. So right now, the Giants are probably talking to teams wanting to trade up in there. Who knows? Maybe the Dolphins wouldn't mind doing that. But the Giants clearly talking to teams. Otherwise, you're looking at a guy like Cedric Jones or possibly Terry Glenn here, a wide receiver pick. But clearly, the Giants disappointed with what has transpired here. Uh, let's go back to Chris Berman. All right, Mort, thank you. So we had the Jets pick first. The Giants now are on the clock, and now the Giant fans are the ones who are licking their chops. What do they do? George Young and company, behind closed doors in 12 minutes, we'll know. Why the Ravens passed up on Phillips and took Jonathan Ogden was that they really liked him. He was a local boy from St. Albans. And here we have Ted Marchaberta. Let's bring him in right now. Ted, if you can join us for a quick second. Sure, sir. Congratulations. Be good, thank you. Um, Ted Marchaborda, the head coach of the Ravens in his first year here. Ted, give us an explanation of his why you picked Jonathan Ogman at that spot as opposed to Lawrence Phillips. Well, we think we're probably getting the best football player in the draft. We decided yesterday afternoon if this time, the, the scenarios that possibly could come up that, as to when we would take Phillips over the players. And in this scenario, we decided to take Ogden o over Phillips. And there was, it was a unanimous decision. Tackle was not really a number one need area for your offensive line, but running back was. Well, what we're going to do, we're going to play Ogden at guard. We're going to start him at left guard, and uh, then we, we take over after that. But uh, we think, I believe, that uh, everything starts up front, and I think we'll probably have one of the finest lines in the National Football League next year. How much of Phillips' past, you know, the character issue, the assault on his girlfriend back in Nebraska, did that play into the public relations issue that these, this team faces or whether or not to take Lawrence Phillips? Well, we're aware of that, Sal, but we tried, to, we tried to get that out of our mind. In other words, we went with what we felt was the best, best athlete, the guy that could help us the most. What will you do with the 26th pick? Any, can you give us any clues? Well, you know, it's, it's a little hard to tell there, but, uh, you know, we, we don't know exactly what's going to happen. We'll wait until that comes. Okay, Ted Marcher Broder, the Ravens head coach with Jonathan Ogden with the fourth pick. Let's go to Chris Berman in New York. All right, Sal, and, it, and it's good to see Teddy. I mean, all he was was one play away from the Super Bowl. Here he is with another team. Somebody still likes to explain that to me. But he's back in Baltimore where he had such a great run with the Colts in the mid-70s with Burt Jones. Jonathan Ogden, 318, and who knows where that's going, Joe, Right at guard. I think of the heyday of the Raiders with Gene Upshaw as a pulling guard. And, of course, you played behind one of the best lines in the history of the NFL with Russ Grimm and company pulling out. But 318 pounds pulling out from guard, what can that mean? I think that you, what you have to look at here is you have to really analyze what Ted said. He said, we're going to try. Jonathan Ogden at guard and I don't think it's gonna work out I just think he's too big he's too angular inside you got Tony Jones at left tackle they just traded for Blackshear Everett at center um, Herman's there at right guard and Brown is at right tackle they're solid and they're young in the offensive line Jonathan Ogden gives him an insurance policy gives him an opportunity to make some changes and shuffle people around 
One thing that you can't get enough of in this